New York, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Spark Summit East. Brought to you by Spark Summit. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to Midtown Manhattan, everybody. This is the Cube. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. A lot going on here at Spark Summit East. Uh, John Furrier and Bert Lattimore running a crowd chat. Check out crowdchat.net slash Spark Summit. Uh, George and I, George is going to be presenting his, uh, his update on big data and Spark in context uh, later on this afternoon. But right now, a uh, good friend of the Cube, Tendu Yogorchu is here. She's the general manager of big data at SyncSort. Tendu, it's great to see you again. Same here. Hi, uh, George. Hi, Dave. Hello. So you guys are on the ground, you know, front lines. We saw you in October at our uh, Big Data NYC yes. event that we run in conjunction with, with, uh, with Strata. Uh, we got the update there, and things keep evolving. You know, we're here at Spark, a lot of talk about, you know, real time, breaking CPU bottlenecks, bringing transaction and analytics together. We were talking off camera. Your heritage is in the mainframe business. That's where a lot of the transaction data sits. So give us the update on uh, SyncSort, what's transpired since uh, October, and then we'll get into it. Sure. Uh, in terms of uh, SyncSort, uh, we got acquired uh, uh, by Clear Lake Capital, and we are the first one in the 10-year fund, and uh, we will be also involved in more acquisitions for that fund, so that's great in terms of uh, uh, organic as well as inorganic uh, growth. Uh, so that's one uh, company level uh, update. And in terms of the, what's happening with the big data trends and adoption that we are seeing and how we are uh, 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 staying ahead of that adoption is really, uh, we see more and more uh, convergence uh, between the batch analytics and operational analytics. And this is driving uh, streaming uh, processing and streaming data sources and batch data sources to be on the same platform. Because as uh, the enterprise and Fortune 500 uh, companies are really trying to build their enterprise data hub and, uh, or data lake, uh, whichever way uh, they uh, prefer to refer it, they have to really access all of the enterprise data. And uh, if uh, you are uh, having Internet of Things use cases with connected devices, mobile phones, having uh, churn analysis for telco or fraud analysis uh, with uh, financial services, you have this uh, streaming uh, data and uh, you also have to make sense of that data and get real-time insights by referring to historical uh, reference data. And it's often that that historical reference data is in the transactional uh, data store and 70% of uh, that data globally is on still mainframes. It's still mainframes because of high throughput and uh, platform availability and security. So we see that convergence, especially in the enterprise and Fortune 500, that uh, uh, having a single uh, data hub and a data platform for accessing all of the enterprise data. That's a challenge. Uh, because it's not an easy task. Uh, it requires skill sets, understanding both the rapidly changing and evolving technology stack with Spark, uh, uh, Hadoop, uh, and all of the technologies uh, and applications building on top of that, as well as uh, understanding of the legacy platforms like uh, mainframes. So we see uh, in our customer base especially uh, that uh, challenge and it's an opportunity for us uh, because we really uh, fit very well. We have a unique value proposition uh, with the understanding of both uh, big data technologies and uh, uh, native integration with the Hadoop stack and uh, uh, Apache Spark as well as uh, uh, best understanding of uh, mainframe data and uh, processing. So we see that. However, uh, streaming data sources uh, and uh, batch, uh, batch analytics and operational analytics on the same platform is a big trend uh, that we are seeing. So Tendu, you touched on it, sort of the overriding customer objective or the problem they're trying to solve. Yeah. They want to reduce churn. Yes. Uh, they want to get fraud detection before it happens uh, or maybe in real time. And they probably want to improve the false positives mm -hmm. uh, that they're getting. Um, they want real-time insights to customer demand preferences. Mm -hmm. Those are the sort of big problems that they're trying to solve. Um, but and when you talk about bringing batch uh, and operational together, so connect those two. Mm -hmm. um, 
it, this is obviously an evolution. We've been trying to solve those problems yes. for decades. Yes. Uh, and then of course, the big data meme attacked that in, in new ways. Mm -hmm. Reducing sampling, um, allowing us to process more data, et cetera. So talk about the evolution and the connection to those business problems, if you would. Sure. In terms of the business problems, uh, the examples I gave, uh, let's uh, uh, take those uh, use cases in terms of telecom, to analysis, or uh, uh, fraud detection with finance. The real time, actually, I liked uh, your uh, definition of real time during uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, your uh, interview with Ali Gatsi from uh, Databricks, because real time is such a misused term. Uh, it means sometimes uh, uh, every hour uh, to an end user and sub-second uh, to an end user on the stock exchange. Uh, so it it's kind of goes from one end to the other. Uh, th th that's why sometimes uh, streaming uh, uh, analytics uh, is uh, better defined for people with real-time insights as you define the uh, Before time. you lose the Before customer. You lose yeah. the customer. Yeah. So yeah. what we are seeing is that as you are bringing uh, this uh, device data, uh, whether you are trying to understand the user behavior uh, with uh, 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 telco or where your user is uh, located in a particular uh, uh, time, uh, which store they are going or how they are helping uh, themselves uh, when they encounter a, a problem uh, with the communication system, or uh, whether you are doing fraud uh, analytics, the customer data, or uh, the transactional data is on the legacy systems, and it's in batch. So a a as you are consuming this uh, streamed uh, data source, and uh, you are actually, uh, uh, you have to re react very fast. And that part is the real-time insights. Mm -hmm. And as you are reacting very fast, you are also making sense of that re reference data, historical data, very fast. So it's not just how fast you are uh, uh, ingesting that data, how fast you are actually uh, applying advanced analytics on that stream data, how fast you are also uh, accessing the uh, historical reference data makes a, a difference. And you have to have that data available. That's where uh, the enterprise data hub comes into picture because you want the availability of your enterprise data, whether it is from mobile devices or it is from uh, sensors or it is from uh, click stream Twitter feeds or uh, from your transactional uh, sources, you want to be able to have all of the data available uh, at all times. Are, are customers evolving their sort of batch into this sort of real-time operational world? Or are, are they sort of taking their real-time operational and subsuming batch, or is it a combination? How are they actually doing? I think they are evolving to the uh, real-time, and it's a, a kind of, uh, uh, it, it, it's a process uh, within uh, most of the organizations uh, because there are many different uh, owners and groups and business units involved. It starts from, uh, uh, most of the big data applications start from the businesses, right? Uh, we, we saw with the marketing ads, et cetera, initially uh, at the evangelists of these. However, uh, there is a lot of enterprise data held by uh, more legacy groups, and uh, it requires that collaboration at the business unit, as, uh, as sometimes IT drives that as well. Uh, so we, uh, uh, we see that uh, uh, transformation uh, across the organizations uh, to the more real time, and uh, one of the uh, most common use cases also we see, really auto operational intelligence and operational data from uh, those legacy platforms being uh, actually uh, processed uh, in the big data uh, analytics. For example, Spark actually has that uh, advantage because uh, it became very popular. It has the promise of being that single compute platform both for uh, streaming analytics and uh, advanced analytics with machine learning as well as uh, um, uh, batch uh, analytics. And uh, last year uh, we made the open source contribution to Spark packages, uh, making mainframe data available for Spark interactive queries. Because uh, you may have operational intelligence data, telemetry data, security data that's on mainframes, and it's very expensive to process that on mainframes. So making that data available for Spark analytics, Spark SQL, uh, interactive uh, queries, and machine learning is a big advantage uh, that Spark can uh, make that possible. And what we... Uh, uh, contributed is uh, making that data available, and also you can actually 
with our engine uh, and uh, on Spark, we can process that data in its original format. So compliance and data governance issues are all uh, addressed. Uh, you don't have to have uh, data conversions or format conversions, uh, mm -hmm. ability to operate on that data using Spark. So our, our CTO and um, our co-founder, um, David Floyer, um, who we call the eminent Mr. Floyer yes. because he's always a, a source of such insight, talked about how as we get more mature with these types of systems that you know, combine insight and transactions, mm -hmm. says we're integrating ever more tightly between the uh, analytics and the transaction tightly and, and with lower latency. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about bringing mainframe data into like s security mm -hmm. applications. Can you talk about where, where you might be capturing in near, near real time, you know, information on transactions on the mainframe and how you would drive a decision um, in near real time, wherever it may be, on the mainframe, out in the data hub, but, but where you need to dig sort of into that core application mm -hmm. and make a decision really, really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, uh, absolutely, I will actually give you uh, uh, more than one use cases. One of the use cases is we see actually Kafka, for example, uh, evolving as a data bus. So uh, as the data becomes a, a service layer in the organizations and uh, 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 that you have operational logs, uh, batch reference data, transactional data, and uh, streaming data uh, from uh, new data sources, uh, really uh, a concept of a data bus and data as a service is uh, very well received and it's simplifying uh, the complexities around all these di different diverse data sources. So we see Kafka e evolving and uh, we see that evolving in the financial services, we see that evolving in the gaming companies and uh, telco. So uh, if you have this uh, uh, message uh, broker and messaging framework where you are using as a data bus, it's really a, a matter of uh, 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 pushing the relevant data to data bus and making it available for all of the consumers. Oh, so it doesn't matter physically where it is. You don't have to make the decision on the mainframe as long as you've got this high performance exactly. feed, exactly. you can make the decision anywhere. Exactly, so if you have operational okay. intelligence data, telemetry and security data that's coming from mainframes or any other uh, uh, data storage uh, in your organization, so that becomes available uh, in a data bus uh, and you can basically uh, make that uh, uh, available to the applications. And uh, our product, DMXH, uh, integrate with Kafka it also can accommodate other uh, protocols that are available between the platforms. However, we see really uh, Kafka uh, and Kafka streaming uh, becoming uh, uh, um, more available. So I'm a customer. I say, okay, Tendu, I like what you're saying. You, you understand my problem, you know, whether it's churn or whatever it is, real time, and you, you sound like you understand the whole, my challenge of trying to simplify and bring these pieces together. How do I engage? with SyncSort, what, what can you do for me? What can I buy from you? What you can buy from us, it's basically a, a, a single software environment that enables all of these data accessible and it helps you access enterprise data and transform it. And when we access and transform, our unique value comes uh, because we are running natively with the compute platforms while insulating the organization from the challenges. So any application you create uh, on a standalone Linux server, or uh, can run on Hadoop MapReduce, or with uh, Apache Spark, without any changes, without any uh, compilation. So skill sets and uh, skill set gap and simplicity are uh, really areas that uh, we are very focused. So that's what we provide. We understand all of your enterprise data. Uh, you can create a data pipeline using our graphical user interface, and uh, that data pipeline can run with multiple compute uh, frameworks while doing all the optimizations for these uh, uh, job flows, uh, taking advantage of Apache Spark optimizations, taking advantage of anything that happens on the map reduced with data governance, security, encryption. Uh, so it's, it's really 
a, a software that helps you access and transform your data. And, and what's the big focus for you guys in the next you know, 12 to 18 months? What should we be watching? Uh, our focus will be uh, having this uh, uh, single software environment for streaming data as well as batch. And uh, we will broaden our uh, uh, value uh, uh, offering uh, in two ways. One, really broadening to streaming, and two, broadening in terms of the data types. So bringing more telemetry and security data uh, from uh, mainframes and making it available for uh, big data analytics and advanced and analytics on Spark and uh, Hadoop and whatever comes next. I love talking to you guys. I mean, it's a many decade history and you're like the oldest startup in the, in, yes. the, in, the, in the IT business. And uh, so I really appreciate you coming back in the Cube, yes. sharing your excellent insights, uh, what customers are doing, how you guys fit. And uh, I'll give you the last word, uh, Spark Summit East, small. It reminds me of the early yeah. days of Hadoop world, yeah. right? What do you expect for, uh, for Spark? Okay, well, once, uh, thank you for having me on Cube. It's Welcome. always a pleasure uh, to talk to you. Uh, funny you said st startup. Actually, uh, since October, uh, we are now in New York startup uh, program, <laughs> yeah. and we'll be moving to New York this year. Oh, uh, yes. cool. <laughs> so Great. we are a 40 uh, <laughs> year, uh, some year old startup. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Spark Summit, this is really exciting for me. It reminded me the early days of Hadoop World. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, uh, small, however, it's very kind of focused and uh, uh, it, uh, we see a lot of technology optimization uh, sessions and that's how it happens usually uh, because the platform becomes optimized before uh, you start seeing uh, people talking about the business applications and optimizing it. Uh, for the end user, so vendors like Syncsort, we are uh, in a uh, we have a big opportunity here because we have seen how it happened with the Hadoop and uh, Spark, whether it's running on Hadoop, Yarn, or on Mesos or Z Linux uh, moving forward, we have this opportunity to make it available for the business users and uh, simplify it. So I'm excited to see the rest of the sessions and looking forward to see uh, what's coming up in, uh, with the real time in Spark. All right, well congratulations on the next chapter and uh, we'll be watching, so thank you. Thank you. All right, keep it right there everybody, we'll be thank back you, with our next guest. Right after this, we're live from Spark Summit East in Manhattan, right back. Oh, it's...